And you can see that the footprint for like this uh, file is also very small as well. You can set your repository up there. You can basically just like set up uh, whatever you need to see. And you can also just like directly reference your readme file without like having to do another like just opening the file stream and everything. So this is like a lot more intuitive. And first of all, I'm going to install Poetry. And it goes very quick. I just installed Poetry, just like using pip like usual. But after that, I no longer have to use pip again because now I have Poetry here. And if I ever have like um, any other like uh, requirements that is in my project, I would already have it installed directly to my virtual environment, which is like Poetry install. So that way you can also like keep your uh, each and every like Python environment separate as well. And that's good practice, basically. And it would also like do all of your versioning for you, which is great. Uh, make sure like you actually use this because like if you actually have like a Python project and you have to like set up your own requirements.txt and then requirements.dev.txt, I feel like having all this like in one file again, you can also do all the stuff like PyTest, Slack, MyPy, everything in the bottom as well. Uh, having all that like in one file is gonna help you out with your workflow quite a bit. It's just gonna like help you keep your code bug free, I guess. And boom, uh, we now have a project that is already uh, ready, have all the requirements uh, ready for you to build your project. And and that's good. And basically, uh, you do want to make sure that you have like everything like defined in your manifest.in as well. This is how you you make sure that, like uh, the PyPy website can read your uh, project, like see where everything is. And yeah. Uh, that's not very legible, but basically all I did was like poetry.go, and I would have the same uh, effect that like I just did with like two um, with setup type uh, setup tool with a lot less fingerprint, like I said. Poetry build and poetry publish. Put in my username and my password for PyPy, and then we're done. So yeah, the last two uh, videos have been like a bit like uh, a bit lower resolution than the the one that we had before, but that's it. Like you have all your tools combined to write one one command, one command line interface, and then you can actually just like do many many things with it. And the way that you can do uh, all of this is just like one tool. And also, like I said before, with versioning with all your requirements like library, have all that checked for you before you build and like uh, publish is going to be a lifesaver for your next open source project. Thank you. So anyone here does like open source at all? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Open source open library, library, open source, or just like you want to publish, publish your, code your code more on like GitHub, GitHub and everything. And everything. Do you, you have like a package, package that you, that you like you, like have, you like have like a thousand, thousand downloads, downloads or something like that? Like that. Okay. I, I, I hate to I brag, brag, but like, like the, the extension that I have, that I have, have one style, style on, on GitHub. GitHub. Yeah. yeah. I just published it last week, but like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but like, yeah um, if everyone here does like a Python project, I feel like this is going to be very, very useful. Even if you're not open sourcing, right? So like. Uh, how, uh, do how do you, like, like maybe, maybe I can ask Mark, like, like, how do you, like, you, normally, like, normally uh, manage, manage your repository? repository? Like, how do you, how do you normally, normally manage, manage your, your workspace, workspace, basically? Do you use, like, uh, some, some other tool that, that I haven't heard of, something like that? Do you have, like, any people, does anyone here, like, use a different tool? Yeah, I use build. Build? Is that Nick or Nick Fowler? No, it's called this. I, I, I stumbled upon it, and then you simply run the module build, and it just gives a set up the UI file, and then builds your stuff. Okay, so okay, you so use you build, build to like, like uh, you stumble upon, upon like this tool called build, build, and you, and you use it use all it since, since then. then. I, I use that for one thing. For the other ones, I use set up and then 
to publish to you so you build, build to like to basically manage all your uh, uh, position environment and, and like basically like requirements and then use twine to upload it to PyPy. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Any more Any questions? questions? Sorry, like Sorry, the, the resolution is too low. low. Like, um, like um, I, I tried to make it like much better than that. So you can actually see the GitHub repository for poetry is on GitHub. You can see the documentation page and everything. And these are the three top videos on YouTube that I find like really helpful for like doing all this. Um, but yeah, um, but like, yeah like, if anyone, if has, anyone any has any question, question or, or you want to, yes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just started using a fast API. And really yeah, so yeah, I, I, I actually have, have like three fast API, API extension library. library. So, so um, yeah, so, yeah, we're, so we're talking about like fast API, API extension, um, web, web framework. And my particular example, example here is like my latest, latest one. one. I actually I have two have others uh, uh, that are just like doing sessions, sessions doing uh, uh, cross-site reference, reference uh, cross-site cross request forgery protection. protection. And this, and this one, one is actually just a cache extension. Uh, uh, so, so what, what it, does it does is, is that like, it allows you to directly access your cache backend, which can be anything. It can be in memory, it can be Redis, it can be memcache. Yeah. So. I highly, I highly recommend you use it. It's actually like, like um, it's a lifesaver life for me right now because, right like, in, in all of our microservices, like, we actually have to like request data, data from external, external source. source. And, and if we're gonna reuse that, that in the next hour, hour anyway, I would just I would put, put it in, in, throw it in Redis. Redis. But because, but because it's a microservice, like, you also want to make sure like, it doesn't have that that much like. I would say like database connection. It doesn't have all this like much stuff that is like. Uh, hard, to hard to manage, manage. So, so I made this made extension this myself, myself uh, called Cache. Uh, so, uh, so you can find it at Fast API Cache on PyPy. Pi. And, and yeah, yeah. Fast API, I feel like, like it has like, like a, a like very, very um, active, active community, community of like basically like just people, people like, like writing, writing their own extensions as well. So I highly recommend if you are looking for your first open source project to publish, I highly recommend looking for something like a web framework that like is in need for a plugin. Or like, or like maybe, maybe just like, like uh, so, so like, like I'm a Rust programmer, programmer as well, as well. Um, um, and if you want to like, like get like high, high performance, performance like, um, like um, high performance, performance tools, tools on Python, Python, you can also you can like also try like finding, finding a project, project that is a wrapper around, around like other languages language as well. I feel like that's also always a good start project. It is tough, but it's always a good start project because like you don't want to do things the easy way anyway. Otherwise, why would you be a programmer? Yes. yes. Do you want the microphone? Want the microphone? I really can't hear you that well. So, so, the, uh, uh, so let me uh, repeat the question. So it's like, how do I how use poetry in, in its other like functionality? Like basically, like, how do I make sure like it shoots the right environment to run commands or something like that, right? And you, you, the reason you ask because you find some unexpected behaviors on like your local environment. Uh, I just, uh, you know, what happened because uh, the team in Poetry when it's my private entity, uh, nothing specific or very magic or, yeah. Okay, so, so I, I, I can answer that. that. Uh, so basically, what happens, what happens in the background of Poetry, like, like what does what it mean does it to mean actually have its own virtual environment created, created and everything like that, right? Like, like, 
Yeah. 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 You can specify entry points like module and function that you will run, like it's a script, and then just will go around and it will run the entry points. Mm, so, so I, I wanted, wanted to focus, to focus the talk on like basically like how to publish a library. library. So like so most libraries library doesn't have that many entry, entry points, point. but, but we can talk about basically like, like uh, how, how to like, to like the manifest that end, like the file that I just like showed a bit earlier. This file, right? So like that's how you publish it, and you can like tell which file to actually include. So it literally just says include license, which is the license file over there. And because it includes my source folder. Yeah, so I have a source folder. And because it includes source, asterisk sub high. That's, that's about it. Like, if, if that was the answer to the question, how, how to basically tell Poetry what to include, and PyPy to know which one is the entry point to everything, right? So in Poetry file, you specify something or not, you can specify entry points. So what Poetry do with this information? To run the uh, function that specifies an entry point. Mm. I mean, I feel like I, I always, always like specify, specify my, my entry point, point in, the in the terminal itself, itself like basically like, like tell. Like my, my Python, Python mission want to run, run. But, but you could. You could. Uh, I, I think, think if you go dig in a little bit on the pyproject.com, you, you, you could tell, you can specify uh, different, uh, different scripts, scripts basically. basically. So like so just like, like Python like JSON call JavaScript, JavaScript, you can you just can like, like uh, poetry uh, run this command and would have like all the prerequisites that you want to have directly defined on pyproject.com. I think, I think you could. You could. Uh, so, uh, so basically, basically I, I, I do this, do this talk to focus, focus a lot, a lot on, like, on like how to actually, actually use this tool, tool which can do many things. They can do a lot of things, things like, especially like, with like, the, the package managing. Uh, uh, but, but how to how use this tool to just like directly publish to open source with like two commands, three commands. So, but I can look into it and I can tell you later. Basically, you could define a high project file. That's the end point. So, my interest, I know how to define. My interest is. What's happening in the ground? So when I define and then do uh, point around. We're going to have a break in, in five minutes, so maybe you can have a talk yeah. Yeah. Se separately, um, try and work it out. Awesome. Um, was there any more questions? Was there, uh, do you have do any questions question from there? Is there any questions online? No question. No okay. okay. So, so I think that's it. Uh, highly, highly recommend everyone, everyone to, do, to do at least, at least publish, publish your first like, like uh, open source library. library. Like, like it's, it's very, very important, important and, and it's actually it's very very easy. easy. Uh, like uh, I said, like that, your first one's always, always the hardest one, right? right? So, so just do it. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.